Hey guys, this is Shane. Today I'm going to show you a bit about what gear I use to produce these YouTube videos. I've had numerous requests, especially over the last few months, if I could show people what I use to do these videos. I thought, why not? I'll just shoot a quick video showing you what I think is the bare essentials to get this done. You don't need lots and lots of rack gear to do YouTube videos. You only need a few things and I've stripped it back. For those who don't know, I used to have a studio. I used to have rack gear coming out of everywhere and didn't tend to use a lot of it. I feel like a lot of that stuff nowadays is unnecessary, especially if you're just a YouTuber, you don't need a lot of stuff to get it done. So let's kick it off. We're gonna start with the video cameras and then we'll take it from there. So let's get into it. Starting with the video cameras, this is a Sony AX53. This is kind of like the top end consumer level video camera. And the reason I wanted to go up to 4K was because I felt like kind of like the future, even though it's sort of like the middle ground. 8K is actually supported on YouTube, but no one actually has 8K screens. What I can do with a 4K video is essentially crop it into quarters and have full HD 1080p, which is awesome. So I can shoot this video and then crop certain sections and downsample it to 1080p and it will look like HD, which is awesome. So I essentially can digitally zoom and downsample the video and not lose any res over a 1080p camcorder. Hopefully that makes sense if you know your video cameras. But yeah, it's a nice simple camera to use and that's what I liked about it. It has some manual features and that's what I'm shooting with right now. The cameras I was using prior to this and that I still use on my videos on any 1080p video that I still shoot are these. These are the Canon XA20s. These are awesome cameras. These have probably way more functionality than the new Sony's that I got. I didn't realize that when I bought the Sony's, even after doing a lot of research, these are still a much more professional camera. Both cameras have their disadvantages in some ways, but this has a whole lot more advantages on the most part. This has two XLR inputs on the front here. So you can just plug a fan powered microphone straight in like a condenser microphone. And that's what usually captures my voice. Although right now I'm using a lapel microphone, which is on my black jumper. For 1080p, video cameras are the way to go in my opinion. You can get a lot of great stuff and visuals out of DSLRs, but I find them very clunky. This has everything that you would need to get going. A camera like this isn't cheap, but what you're getting is something that you can just plug a mic straight into and get results straight away. One thing I should point out about the preamps on this particular camera is that while they're fine for capturing voice and relatively loud, sounds you can't just go miking up an amp directly into the video camera it doesn't like that at all so keep that in mind you'll need a separate sound card that said these are amazing cameras anytime you see me using multiple shots i'm either using the sony's as well as one or two of these i'm not much of a camera whore i tend to only buy what i need when i need it and i've had these for probably four years now maybe longer and i expect the sony's to hopefully last that long as well in terms of microphones, I used to use a wireless kit, but that died unfortunately. It was a Sennheiser kit, and I just couldn't justify getting it repaired. It was kind of on its last legs. So in the short term, and what I'm doing right now, I'm recording my voice into one of these. This is a Zoom H1 recorder that you've seen. I've done demos of this on my channel, recording a band with these two onboard microphones. Right now, I'm actually using this with a lapel microphone. So this is just clipped onto my top. And yeah, I'm recording my voice that way and I'll sync that up separately in post. I kind of like the sound and intimacy kind of vibe of these particular mics over like a condenser mic in the room. Unless you're really close to the condenser mic, that can work. But there's something about a room sound that I don't like a whole lot. It depends on your situation. But I recently just went back from using this to shooting with a condenser mic plugged into my other video camera. And I actually prefer the sound of this a little more in my opinion. Placement of these is important and you've got to remember you've got them on otherwise you can knock them easily and it will make a whole lot of awful noise. So just be wary of that as well. If you are thinking of starting a YouTube channel, lapel mic sort of setups aren't essential. You can just use the camera audio. I might switch to that right now and show you how that sounds. It's gonna sound probably pretty different to this, but that's what you get. So it just depends on how far you wanna take it. For me personally, I like to have my voice in the best and most clear way I can have it for the videos, it always helps. When I'm recording electric guitar, for example, if I'm recording an amp, I should always use this because there's something about when you edit and you've got a room voice microphone, you know, you can get some reflections and some delay and you'll hear the reverb chop in and out. These tend to sort of reduce a lot of that impact. 
I've just finished recording two amplifier demos right now and I'm actually using two microphones. The first one is this. This is the Rode NT2A microphone and the reason I like to use this over just about any large diaphragm condenser microphone, especially for my recording setup, is that it also has a decibel reduction circuit right here. So if I've got the amps extremely loud, even with say a conventional microphone that doesn't have this, my audio input on my interface will actually clip. So I run this at either minus five is fine normally or just at minus 10. And then I can actually start to bring the preamp gain up a little bit on my M track. So what I find, that's my M track's my actual uh, interface. So I find having that particular switch is just awesome. I don't tend to use a lot of these other two. These are polar patterns and also frequency roll off. If I'm doing vocal work, I'll, I'll tend to put this to 80 or 40. It doesn't really matter. But um, for recording electric guitar, leave them as it is. That's one of the two microphones I use all the time on my demos. The other microphone that you've seen probably a whole lot on my channel over the years is this. It's the Rode M3 microphone. I actually think this is the best electric guitar microphone around. I've used 57s, Beta 57s, Sennheisers, all kinds of stuff. I like this one the best. In combination with the NT2A, I think I get some pretty good results. Internally, this also has a decibel reduction circuit as well. These are like one of the best all round inexpensive mics you can buy. These are really, really good mics and I've used them for everything from drums to guitar amps to, to vocals, live vocals, everything. They, they sound good. If you're gonna be recording acoustic guitar, probably wouldn't buy one of these, but there's something about their sound that works extremely well for amps. So they're the two that I will use when I'm actually demoing an amp with the speakers and all that kind of stuff. So I'll set up both of these and then I'll generally get a mix of both. So the way that I record any guitar tracks or anything that I'm actually recording acoustically, I tend to use this particular sound card right here. That's right, it's only got two channels and that's pretty much all you need doing YouTube videos. I do have two eight input sound cards by Zoom I tend not to really need any more than two channels at one time. As I said, my voice when I speak either gets recorded into this little zoom unit or it goes directly into the camera. So I don't need that third one. If I did, I probably wouldn't use this all of the time. I'm actually producing an uh, album for a guy right now and I had, used to have racks and racks of stuff for recording vocals and tube preamps and all this kind of stuff. The results you can get from your computer and a decent sound card like this is fine. This isn't anything flash, but it absolutely sounds great. A lot of people will say, oh, the cheap stuff has noisy preamps. I, I'm yet to hear that with this particular unit. I think it just sounds really great. And while there's no passive mode on each of these preamps, what it does, it does extremely well. And yeah, what can I say? I'm, I'm a huge fan and that's it. I keep my stuff pretty simple. Probably the most essential thing you can have if you do pedal demos on YouTube or you just do recording at home and you live in an apartment or whatever is this, the Torpedo Live by Two Notes. This thing has completely changed my outlook on not only digital gear but just music gear in general. Most people will get a better sound using the load box as a speaker and microphone as opposed to actually miking up their amps. If they don't know what they're doing, this makes it extremely easy because you can essentially bypass the built-in speaker on your actual amplifier and this emulates or references the actual amp speaker with different microphones and different microphone placements. I'll show you a little bit about that on screen. All right, I am actually just filming the screen right now, so just bear with me. Hopefully that looks all right. It should look fine. So as you can see right here, I've got a Fender cab set up with a particular type of ribbon microphone. I can then move this microphone within this particular space. I can have it on right in the center, off to the side, move it back and forth, all that kind of stuff. And actually will give you a really great vibe. You can then also change the room type. So if you want more of a reflective sound, you can use this Studio B. We also have a loft, a basement. So we've got a whole lot of different types of rooms. I tend to use this one 
probably the most accurate to my recording situation. Um, and yeah, I, I've just used that a lot. Now, this is the setup I used on one of my Joyo videos when I demoed the amps. So I actually have a few presets that I've been using for a long time. This is the one based on the Super Reverb. I actually purchased this particular amp um, impulse and it just, it sounds spot on, it really does. So yeah, let's try another one. We've got the Blues Deluxe as well. Now this Blues Deluxe is based on the stock speaker and you might know I have a Swamp Thing in my particular amp. So I actually purchased the Swamp Thing one which is called the Bayou, Bayou. So that's a 212 Swamp Thing referenced sound and that works extremely well. In terms of what program I use to record, I just use Nuendo, it's what I'm most familiar with. Anytime I'm producing an album for myself or someone else, I use Nuendo. The reason is I know it back to front. In terms of programs, it doesn't matter what program you use to record, a lot of people think you have to use Pro Tools because that's the cool thing. It really doesn't matter, it's whatever you use. And if you're not collaborating with other people, it doesn't really matter. Get used to one, you can use Reaper, you know, Cubase, you can use a whole lot of different things, even Adobe Audition, if that's still around, you can use stuff like that, it doesn't really matter. Even Sony Vegas Pro has an awesome audio editor in there as well. I've used that for albums in the past as well. Get familiar with whatever it is you use and understand how it works and that's the best one for you to use. So don't get sucked into buying something that you might not actually need. There's a whole lot of great options out there. So have a look around, find out which one you like, the workflow of the best and take it from there. In terms of video editing, I almost use Sony Vegas exclusively. And I say almost because in the early days, I don't think I did any editing on the computer. I might have used Windows Movie Maker possibly, but there were some demos that I shot, which was one camera in one live take and they were pretty actually pretty decent demos in terms of you know going back to the early days of youtube just getting creative with one big take and not having any editing software at all in terms of sony vegas i started to hit a bit of a bottleneck with my computer with my video card and i tried upgrading parts and putting together what was supposed to be one of the best combinations of video card and cpu for Sony Vegas and I still found it extremely time consuming when outputting files. Even with CUDA core help in rendering, it didn't really help that much. It was still a huge wait. Each one of my videos took between 45 minutes and an hour and a half to, to output because I do a lot of effects. Anytime you start doing complicated projects with Sony Vegas, especially with chroma keying and all that kind of stuff, you're not sure what that is. It's kind of like the green screen thing and you're adding levels to your videos and editing stuff like that, it tends to put the rendering time in a bit of a, in a, bit of a bad place on a PC with Sony Vegas. I haven't used Premiere, but I know with Sony Vegas, it used to take me forever. My documentary, which was 40 minutes, took about 24 hours to render. And if you find a glitch, you gotta back, go back and do it again, which totally sucks. And that's when I decided to try a Mac. And I've never looked back. My rendering times are down so much a couple of minutes per video tops even with full blown green screen i can output that file in no time at all it is a little bit slower when i output a 4k video but not that much slower it's maybe doubled in time so from say two minutes to four minutes tops as opposed to an hour i'll take that any day of the week my actual productivity went up and I stopped pulling my, what little hair I have left out of my head. Everything from the workflow to the rendering time with Final Cut is just so much better. Even though technically a Max hardware isn't as good as what you can build in a PC for the same price, and I'm well aware of that being a huge nerd, it's something about it just works and that's what it comes down to in the end. Forget about the specs. That's where I made the biggest mistake. If I knew years ago that I could just get a Mac and save myself the headache of trying to piece together a computer that worked well for video editing, I would have done it a long time ago. I had read that a lot of people said how great it is for video editing, but I was so hung up on the specs that I didn't take that into account. I figured the computer I had was technically better, it should be faster, so getting something else would actually be taking a step in the wrong direction. Since I made the change, I really think my videos look so much better. I can edit and render them a whole lot faster, and in turn, that just paid for itself. Productivity is key, especially if you've got, say, another job, and you're coming home, you're shooting a YouTube video, I don't wanna spend an hour waiting for a file to render, 
or you know trying to edit when it's all glitchy and so forth you know the mac does make it easy for that i gotta say if i'm doing just audio production it's pc all the way for me as i said i know new window back to front and that's where i'll stay i'm not going to swap to mac to do that there's no point i have to learn another program all over again look how crap this picture looks right now not only with me in it but how dark it looks that's because this light is actually off it's the easiest way for me to film it and show you what I use. So basically inside there's five bulbs and you can turn two or three of them on at any one time, which is pretty cool, or all of them. Without proper lighting, like what you see right now, the videos are gonna look crap. An average video camera with a good lighting setup will look amazing. Even if you have an entry level video camera, if you light your room correctly, it's gonna look so much better than a good camera with bad lighting, so keep that in mind. So this desktop picture right here on the Mac isn't actually my cat. <laughs> you would think he is, just based on this. Oh, there he goes. Oh. <laughs> I call him the fat man. So this is actually the Mac I do all of my video editing on, and I use Final Cut Pro X, which a lot of people that use the older version don't seem to like it, but I love it, I think it's great. I never used the old version, so I had no way to compare the two. All I know is this works extremely well. And I'll bring up one of my projects here so you can check it out. All right, so you might be thinking, hey, that doesn't look that confusing, but if you uh, open it up, you can see, this isn't actually that big a project. When I do the green screen stuff, for example, it's, it's way busier than this, so this is, you know, just a regular project. But I love the workflow on this program. It works extremely well and it renders extremely fast. I defy you to find a program that can render video faster than Final Cut. Even Premiere can't. And that's why I went for this in the end. Plus you don't pay a monthly subscription. So that's essentially all I use on the Mac. On the most part is, well, I browse the internet and all that kind of stuff on it, but I use it for editing and that is it. I don't use it for much else. I have a few external hard drives where I keep all of my uh, files sorted and organized in a relatively good way. I have folders full of stuff that I use on every video and then other you know green screen backdrops that I'll use if I need them and a lot of these other files are just works in progress right now so um, yeah. also have folders full of photos and stuff which I took with my new camera. That 4K video camera takes amazing photos. It's just crazy. I wanted this little uh, helmet thing in focus and that's what I got. It's fantastic. So yeah, I have everything pretty well organized on my computer. I think that's important. If you're gonna get into doing YouTube videos, try to keep things as organized as you can. If you have files that you always use, put them all in one spot so you can find them easily or at least easily import them into each project. So this little box right here is the HD60 from Elgato. And I'll bring up the box, actually it's still sitting here. So this particular thing is actually a video game device and it's great for streaming a video camera straight to YouTube. To do that though, I had to build a computer that could handle it, which is over here. So I got the top of the line AMD, uh, the older chips, not the Ryzen ones, the old school ones. And if you wanna find out more about the streaming process, I actually have a video on my other channel that I'll put up in the cards so you can check that out as well. But you do need a pretty robust computer to do that and to do it without dropping too many frames. So that's an important thing as well. Spec wise internally, this is the same as the computer we were just looking at in my other room where I do all my audio except the video card on this particular computer isn't the same standard as the other one. But that said, you don't really need a great video card in a computer to capture or to stream video. It's more about the CPU. It is a decent video card, but it's not the same type of quality as the one in my other room, which it doesn't need to be. Thanks for watching. My name's Shane. If you have any comments or questions about anything in the video or you want to learn more, please let me know. Don't forget, I'll post a video up in the cards that will show you how to stream to YouTube via a HDMI camcorder or video camera. Like I said, I don't have walls full of amps or anything like that. I like to keep my setup very simple and with today's technology and how you can make the most of video and audio editing within your actual door or Final Cut Pro, 
you don't really need a whole lot of external hardware these days. Just a good sound card, a couple of good mics, and you should be good to go. I hope this video has been helpful. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them below. Thanks again, catch you soon. See ya.